And so if anyone wants to share where you're at in your process and even some wins or celebrations or breakthroughs that you're having, I'd love to hear those. And then we'll follow up with some questions. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, it's Cindy. I'm at the hospital, so I have a mask on. I'm hiding in the corner. Um, I'm on day 17. I think I'm frozen. Sorry, I got logged out there for a second. I completely missed your question if you were speaking, Cindy. No, I was just letting you know I was on day 17. Yay, how's that going for you so far? Uh, good, I think I saw the biggest change last night. Um, I had some bloating and then this morning there was a big change though. So. Beautiful. I, yes. I probably have really, I probably have really poor connection. I'm sitting in the hospital, so. I don't have much reception in here. No worries. I'm glad you're here, Cindy. And that makes so much sense. Oftentimes, before we have a breakthrough, we have a bit of a kind of healing crisis or bloating or some other symptom that shows up. And that's the body's way of bringing it to the surface so it can be eliminated. And once it's eliminated, that's when we start to see the real transformation happening and it is such a process. So I love hearing where you're at thus far, Cindy. Do you have any specific questions or won't help troubleshooting anything? And how's your food going? And um, happy to kind of help around that area. Um, I think food going good. I'm primarily, I don't have much of an appetite. So I kind of shared that with Jennifer and Carrie. I'm when I drink just a shake, that pretty much satisfies me. So I have to force myself to eat. But I've never been a big eater to begin with. I just I guess was eating I thought was healthy, but I noticed the biggest change when I eliminated the dairy um, from my diet. I think that's when I started noticing some changes. So but as far as food, I'm basically just eating fruits and vegetables. Um, and I did buy some, now you can answer this, some sourdough, um, what is it? Whole wheat toast or bread today. So once I get off the R cleanse, I can have that maybe with some avocado. Um, but besides that, yeah, it's going good. Yeah, congratulations. And yeah, I've experienced the same thing. My appetite is usually reduced by about two thirds just because I'm feeling so nourished. And especially as we get our absorption happening, which increases and improves over time as we really restore that gut microbiome. So the more we're absorbing, the less hungry we are. But yeah, just making sure we're getting enough calories and that's different for all of us. And it's going to change over time, your appetite based on everything as the hormones balance and as the gut balances. And then with the sourdough, just see how that goes for you um, after your 10 days. And maybe you'll decide like, yep, I like it. That's fine. And maybe if you just really pay close attention when you bring it back in, if you notice any fogginess or less energy or any inflammation, just know that, um, it's not quite ready to be incorporated yet. It can be in the future, but there's just still deeper work to do. So obviously it's always your choice and have fun with it. But um, listening to those internal cues can help us get much deeper results throughout this process. Yeah, my biggest problem I'm, I have is my rosacea that I've had for 20 years. So I have severe, severe flare-ups to where if I don't, I don't leave the house some days. So 
I haven't seen that go away completely. I feel like I'm not as puffy and, and maybe the pockets, I'd get like little pus pockets. That sounds gross, I know, but um, on my face and I don't feel like I'm getting those quite as much. I still have acne, but I'm hoping that after this off cleanse that that will start to go away. And then I'm planning on doing another 30 days and then that second round of R will kill them all. I'm hoping that's my goal. <laughs> That's one of my big things I'm trying to accomplish with this whole thing is just to get my face clear. Beautiful. So good to know. And yes, the rosacea, I mean, especially if it's lifelong or long standing, it is going to take mm -hmm. time. And so, you know, I would give yourself at least that 90 days of incorporating the superfoods. I love that you're going to follow it up with another 30 day. And from there, think about following it up with a core four. And yeah, that's what I have planned. Awesome. I love it. And then for getting the best results, I mean, to clear out that skin, we want to get your kidneys filtering. So make sure to test to see if your kidneys are filtering. And if they're not, continue going on those fresh fruits, even add in some kidney tea. And then the other thing with the skin is working with that bowel health long term. And again, like it takes years for us to kind of or even multiple generations to get into a state where we're experiencing symptoms. So it also takes time to pull out of those. So be right. patient with yourself, um, enjoy the process. And if you're able to, I would pause on like the sourdough breads and such as long as possible, obviously have fun, enjoy your life. Um, but I just when I'm eating it every day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, always finding that great balance. But just knowing that that is going to impact that gut health of getting that mucoid plaque out. Um, okay. so bread is contributing to that mucoid plaque and our goal is to clean that out. So finding that right balance for you, but that's where I would recommend what, looking at- What kind at of tea? Finding some kidney tea, even at your local health food store or grocery store. Um, okay. You know, There's lots of kidney formulations, but all of us need a little bit of a kidney boost to support that deeper filtration. Is it just called kidney tea? Yeah, there's different kidney formulations and you can go to your local grocery store and they'll usually have like a liver, kidney, you know, different aspects. Okay. So checking out a kidney tea would be great for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any, uh, anything else, Cindy, or do you have other questions? Well, one thing I, positive thing is I used to have hypoglycemic. So anytime I didn't go without eating more than three hours, my sugar would drop. I'd have to immediately get something or start sweating and shaking. I have not been one time since I've been on this. Congratulations. That's a huge thing. That's huge. <laughs> yeah, that's a huge, thing. So huge. Yeah. Physically, emotionally, mentally, that's huge. Congratulations. Thanks for sharing. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, I started the um I got my package last night and I started the um the core four this morning. Um I split the power shake between me and my daughter and my son, the 20 ounces with the five five and a half tablespoons. Um is that okay, or am I like, am I supposed to take like the whole thing by myself? Great question. So, those five tablespoons are just guidelines. I usually do from two to five tablespoons, depending on how hungry I am and depending on consistency. Because I like it a little bit thinner consistency. Other people like it a little bit thicker consistency. So it's really just what is going to sustain you. So if you need, you know, a couple of shakes between all of you to get through your next activity, then go for a couple of shakes. Um, but it's great that you're sharing it with your family. Everybody benefits from it. So, yeah, I did the five and a half tablespoons with the 20 ounce water between all of us. Mm -hmm. So yeah, is that's... that enough for all of us or should I put more liquids or? I would probably do. Um, I mean, that that probably is enough for both of you, but or all of you, but it's going to you're going to go through it more quickly. So I'd probably do a couple tablespoons 
of the shake in one glass of water and then a couple tablespoons of the shake in another glass of water and then just share it and split it up so that everybody gets more. Okay. Okay, that, that sounds, yeah, because I was like, oh my gosh, if I'm going to be sharing it with all of us, it's going to go by. <laughs> It'll go fast. It'll go quick. Yeah, that we're going to go right through it. Um, and obviously yes. the, the pills, I'm, I'm going to be taking them, just just me. Perfect. Um, and the, the pot, the cherry too, I think. My kids didn't like it, so I'm just going to take that by, by myself. Amazing. Um, but yeah, I, I think for the um, the smart order, I did order the one for the for the kids. So, yay! I love that. The Epigenius Kids is great. It gets the glyphosate out of the body. So, yeah, and make sure that you are nurturing yourself because I know so many mamas. This is just a great time to actually reset and nourish yourself so that you can give back to others. So, your core four has thirty servings. Sorry, there's a really loud plane flying over, but um, your core four has 30 servings if you're doing those five tablespoons. If you're doing two tablespoons, you know, you'll have double, so. Okay, mm -hmm. then I'll definitely cut back on the tablespoons because I did, the consistency is a little, it a little thick. And then I did it with um, almond milk, mango, and banana. So it was like super thick, <laughs> <laughs> but they loved it. So it was, it was really good. Yay, I love that they're getting that in. Wonderful. Yeah, because I was like, I kind of wanted to keep it to myself, but I was well, it's like, it's not fair that I'm like taking care of me and I'm like not giving them any. Well, you guys just might have to re-up. I find that it ends up saving me a lot on my grocery bill because it's such nutrient density and it's about two dollars and fifty cents per serving. And so oftentimes I find that's much less expensive than going to the store and grabbing snacks. So just kind of weigh out your costs and your budget. Um, but for me, I've found it actually saves me quite a bit by bringing those superfoods in. So, okay. Okay. That, that makes sense. Um, so then I should definitely budget like on my grocery list then. Like, cause I, most of my, like most of my money goes on to fruits and the fruits, fruits and veggies is like, they are, they are our snacks. Like I don't buy a lot of That's snacks. Great. That's great. <laughs> I buy a lot of fruits and they run through it so, so fast. So I can actually like, if I can replace this with that or, you know, just add it in together. Yeah, I would do a combination of the two. And that way you get that deeper nourishment and satisfaction and um, as well as getting those wonderful fresh fruits and veggies in. Perfect. Yeah, I'm so I'm so excited about this. Yeah. Thanks for being here. No, no problem, of course. I'm like I get all the links for like um the Zoom meetings. I'm like, I want to be in this one too. I want to be in this one too. And I'm so upset because I missed one earlier. <laughs> You know, I always say we heal in community, so that's great that we can all share each other's, our stories together and learn from each other. Do we have other questions in here as well? I just wanted to hop in and say welcome. I see a lot of people from our line in here and um, that just popped in. And so we're just sharing either wins or asking questions. So feel free to, to pop on if you have any questions. And this is Rita Fleming. She's amazing. Thanks, Michelle. I have a question. Go ahead. I actually um, spoke with Carrie, uh, I believe, Sunday. Um, I'm on day, it's about 38 now. Um, day 24, I started having um, pretty bad, um, what, I th what I think is heartburn, but um, it's just really intense kind of burning in the top of my stomach so much. And then I get bloated. Um, mm -hmm. and so I've tried a lot of different things over the course of this, like almost two weeks now. Um, but every time that I took 
the biomedic, it was happening. And then I stopped the biomedic to try to, cause I mean, I, this was like pain to where I couldn't even eat or like anything for, mm-hmm. for hours and hours th- throughout the day. Um, and so I removed the, I thought, well, maybe my stomach's upset. Um, most of my symptoms like match and I have no idea, but just match like gastritis. Mm-hmm. So I, um, I removed the biomedic. I tried to keep it. I mean, I kept reducing it, kept reducing it, but every time I took it within five minutes, I was getting the burning. So I, I stopped that for, I, it's been a couple of days now. Um, and I was just doing the shake and then I was okay with the power shake for a little while. And then the power shake started burning my stomach, like within a couple minutes. Um, and then, so I was, I got in a new kit that I had gotten a mixture of. So I switched over to the, um, oh, what's that one called? The, uh, super meal mm-hmm. and tried that. And that worked for about a day. <laughs> then I had the same problem. So, um, the last, what I've noticed the last two days, I haven't used any products except I've been keeping my routine kind of the same but I'm not using any of the products except the aminos. And I'm just trying to eat like fruits and vegetables and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and so um, today is the first day that I haven't had any symptoms, but like around, I've noticed that, that I start getting the pain anywhere between one and three o'clock. It's like the same time every day. It's kind of weird. So mm-hmm. between like one and three, but then it'll last like two to four hours. Um, and I'll just get like really bad bloating and stuff. So today was the first day I didn't get it. Um, and I did take some around 1130, like before I thought it was going to hit, I took some, it's like an all natural, um, kind of like Alka-Seltzer, but it's all natural. Mm -hmm. Um, I took some of that and I didn't end up, I kind of felt a tinge of burning when I, right before I took it, like it was just kind of maybe thinking about it and then it didn't happen. (laughs) So I, I'm just, I'm just really at a loss at what to do. I really felt amazing taking all the products and I, I just don't know what to do because I'm just getting to a point where like, I'm not getting enough food. Like I'm not getting enough, like, cause I can't either can't eat or, you know, now today when I can't eat, I'm just trying to eat things that I can, but it's, I'm kind of just like, I don't know. I guess I'm just confused. I don't know what to do. I want help because I just want to stay on the program. Like I'm getting so many amazing benefits from it, but I'm just at a point now where I don't know what to do. Yeah, those are really good questions, Melissa. And is this something that you've dealt with um, in your past history, this kind of burning? Um, no, I've never had the burning. I, I had lots of bloating and stuff all the time. So mm-hmm. lots of, you know, that kind of stuff going on, but I've never had like this heartburn burning sensation. Got um, it. Yeah. The only time I've ever had anything like this happen before was on occasion. If I would drink some alcohol, like if I had hard alcohol, this would happen, but like, I haven't, I don't even ever drink anymore. I haven't drank at all since I've been on this. So um, but that's the only other time I can think in my life that I've ever had this feeling. <laughs> okay. And then what were some of your goals coming in or what's, do you have like a little bit more background history? Cause it could be old symptoms coming to the surface. Like it could be old acid acidosis that is already there that is coming to the surface as a healing side response it could be a few different things so I just want a little bit more background sure so um I haven't had I guess just quick rundown I haven't had wheat or dairy for 21 years because I um eventually found out that I was sensitive to them well I was tested allergic um I got severe vertigo from it um I, what I've been trying to heal is for the past quite a few years, I'm bloated all the time, no matter what I eat, just constant bloating. Um, I haven't been able to lose, um, weight at all. Um, and I've actually lost nine pounds, which is great. I didn't do this to lose weight. I did this to become healthy. And then as my body healed, I figured the weight would come off, but, um, hormones have been an issue. Um, I, had just a little TMI. I had not had a period at all or a regular one in years. And I, day 11 had a period real one. So, um, I'm seeing, I had definitely have, um, some yeast going on. So I added that zo zo however you say that thing, the zolite or whatever. I can't think of the name of the one. Zolite, right. (laughs) Yeah. So I added some of that. Um, I definitely felt the effects of, um, having, um, of like when I was like, I jumped in literally immediately, just fruits and vegetables, like did it followed Carrie's, um, carry schedule like hundred percent. And so I was already getting diethanol kinds of stuff before I even went into the cleanse R portion. 
Mm-hmm. But yeah, so basically for years, I just, I have not felt myself. I don't feel okay, but all my tests are normal. Everything's fine. I have thyroid issues in my family, but they say my, thi- my thyroid's fine. Um, I've, I mean, I've had high, like a family history of high cholesterol. And so my cholesterol's on the higher side. It's not excessively high, but so I don't know, just, I really haven't felt myself in multiple ways. <laughs> you know, my whole body has not been okay for years, but especially the last five years. Um, and so I don't know if there's any other information I can think of that you need or whatever, but um, that was really helpful. Thank you. Um, and I think it's interesting that it's happening the same time each day from one to three. That's kind of the liver hour of detox. And I see that Carrie, you're on here as well. I don't know if you want to pop in and share some of your words of advice, but I did want to say, cause you mentioned liver. I did have my gallbladder removed like eight years ago. It just, okay. I never had, um, I never had like gallstones or anything. Just all of a sudden, one day I felt funny, felt weird. Anyways, long story short, I was in emergency surgery, having my gallbladder removed. They said it just stopped working and it was leaking into my liver. Mm, Um, Sorry. But that's like, I never had gallstones. And they said that I didn't have any when they checked it. So I don't know. Right. So what it sounds like to me from what I've experienced with this in the past is um, it could be old kind of healing crisis that's coming up. And so you might just have to go really simple for a little while, just on your fresh fruits. If you're not getting any burning, burning sensation with that. I know sometimes when you are just doing an alkaline diet with fresh fruits and veggies, sometimes these, um, acidosis can come to the surface and you can feel like, Oh my God, I feel like I have heartburn, but it's really acids being cleaned out of that area, um, you know, in the diaphragm, in the heart region, in the esophagus. And so we'll go through those symptoms of what we're clearing out. And for me, that was definitely my experience when I was healing my chronic pain. I had to re-experience that chronic pain before I could heal it. So for me, it sounds like it's in that phase of healing, but if you need to just simplify for right now and just go to fruits and things that are like really easily digestible, then you might want to stick there. And I want to see Carrie, are you available as well? If you have any specific thoughts on this one? Yeah, I am. Um, so I think it's more like interstitial lymphatic acidosis. So you have to think of your stomach is like, literally it's, um, your stomach is like a, like a tree trunk. And so you, when you have this like long trunk and it, we have branches off the stomach and the branches are the pancreas and the liver and the lungs and the kidneys. And so if you have acidosis in the stomach and lymphatic congestion in the stomach, you absolutely have acidosis and lymphatic congestion in the organs that surround it. And so what's called cerebral interstitial lymphatic acidosis is when the acidosis goes all the way up to the the back of the brain. And so as we're cleansing, a lot of times we're bringing all of this acid, these acids down and right at the top of your stomach is your sternocheile. And if you lay down flat on the belly and place your hands like this and press in and move down to your belly button, you might feel like a lump of tissue or tightness. And that's like drainage. It's like the lymphatic drainage drains into your small bowel and your organs and things will get really bunched up right there and feel like heartburn a lot of times as acids are coming down but we have to remember that the way acidosis is removed from the body is lymph bringing to kidneys kidneys eliminating through urine but also the colon eliminates food waste and organ waste so you know at that time of day it sounds like the liver might actually be getting rid of fat soluble toxic waste and dumping it into trying to get it into the colon Um, But if you have this blockage, you have fermentation happening, or you have acids building and they don't know where to go, you're experiencing this heartburn. So I think it's like actually more so that the shakes are detoxing you and the, and it's like pulling stuff from the organs and bringing it to the center, but the body's not draining it into the small bowel properly. So I know I suggested on Sunday to get the oxygenated powder, I still recommend that to blow through anything that might be backed up that's causing fermentation. But we also have lymph nodes, like when we have years of acidosis, we have lymph nodes, the lymph nodes in the stomach lining can turn like rubber. 
and all the way along the neck. And this is what like GERD is so dangerous for our body long-term because it can turn into those esophageal cancers and lymphomas. And um, so when we're breaking, busting up these hardened lymph nodes, you're gonna have lots of acids coming out. So, you know, it's like, you could be really uncomfortable for a short period of time, but I honestly think it's like, when you, when you like lean into it, just let it get really uncomfortable for a little bit, um, you might bust through it. So you could slow it down, but I wouldn't slow down your fruits. I would increase your fruits and decrease your veg to give the pancreas a good cleansing time. And same with the liver, the liver and the pancreas will cleanse way easier on fruits than they will on veg. And you can start to cool some of these acids down to calm the system down. And then I would bring in that oxygenated intestinal cleanser and I would start doing some massage from the sternum, like from the diaphragm right below where the spaces in between your ribs, press down lightly and move straight down to your belly button and just keep doing that every day, nine strokes, morning and night, do it in the afternoon, really make sure that you'll, cause you'll feel and you'll hear fluid draining into the small bowel. Um, so it's like a more of like a reflex, like it's getting stuck and jumbled up in there. So those are my, thoughts on that and solutions for now, but I think that the only way to this is through this. Um, and so we can't really keep going around it. We got to just go through it. Um, and then, you know, integrating in like, even like white American ginseng would be a good addition um, to really having those adaptogenic herbs in there or the aloe digest that's the liquid that's really cooling. Um, so switching over to the aloe digest for a little bit while you're in this phase and just drinking that glass of water, maybe 30 minutes before that one o'clock hour with some aloe digest will really help break up some of those acids and cool the stomach down. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to make sure I heard you. Sorry. My little guy kept trying to talk to me. So 30 minutes before I, you know, I'm starting to get symptomatic to the aloe digest liquid you said. Yes. yes. Okay. And what was the other one that you said? I didn't hear the other one. So it's an oxygenated intestinal cleanser. I think it's called Oxy Powder and it's from Global Healing. Um, oh yes, I did get that one and I did started taking it a couple days ago. I ordered it and once I got it in, I've been taking it every night, um, four capsules. Um, and I'm having um, liquid, but I'm thinking that that's because things are flushing through. So I kind of just am just letting that happen. Hopefully that's okay. <laughs> Yeah, you can, if it's too much, you can back down to three caps, but it's just clearing the way so that some of this fermentation can leave. You know, we can have like stagnant stuff in our bowels for a long time. We can have little pockets like diverticula with hardened stool. Um, so all this stuff could be busting open. The lymph nodes could be draining. So I love the oxygenated cleanser because it, it leaves like when you eat certain foods, you either leave behind an acid ash or an alkaline ash. And acid foods live behind mineral deposits like sulfur and phosphorus and nitrogen and they can like settle into the tissues and the organs and in the basically in the throughout the colon so you really could be breaking up years of acidosis and those acids have to be flowing out and if they're not and things are getting stuck they're flowing up and causing like a reflux so um i really think you're dealing with interstitial lymphatic acidosis from the head down okay that makes sense i've been getting my lymphs massaged when i go to my massage therapist and she said that my like the center in my sternum area she said that was just there was a little in there but she said my left hip like that lymph node there was pretty full so she kind of starts and then she does like my neck and kind of like like strokes there and stuff i don't know she knows what she knows what she's doing with the lymph drainage thing, but she did say that she noticed some extra in there. So maybe that's what um, is going on. So do you think that I should then still try to do some of the power shake and stuff? Or do you think I should just kind of like chill out for a little bit and eat mostly fruits and do this other, the aloe digest and things? I would um, cool things down for a bit. Okay. That's my intuition, cool it down, aloe digest, high watery fruit or all fruit for a little bit. Um, and it, until you get the aloe digest, if you don't have it, if you can find a pure aloe vera leaf, get a leaf and you can like call out the middle of the leaf and blend it with water and cucumber, just really cooling and make like a jug of water and drink that every day. Just start to cool things down, cool the acids down, keep on the oxygen and intestinal cleanser and slow on the biomedic for a few days. 
and then I would slowly start reintegrating. But for now, I just start cooling everything down, cool the acids down, let them get out. Because okay. in limitation is the most important part of regenerative detox. Otherwise, we're and we're in accumulation, and that's what it sounds like is happening. Is the biofilms are stripping, and we're stripping mineral deposits out of the interstitial tissues and lymphatic waste, and then it's like getting jammed up and causing this reflux because what's in must come out so it's coming up right so we've got to get your your body is not working the other way so we need to get it moving that way. okay thank you so much i was like i don't know what to do so i so appreciate your help i was like i don't want to stop but i also can't handle this <laughs> totally we got you girl thank you um i want to say something um, as a massage therapist and a cosmetology student, you're not supposed to massage lymph nodes because your lymph nodes get swollen when there's an immunity problem and bacteria and all of that stuff is getting like clogged up in that area. So what happens when you massage it is instead of the lymph nodes doing their job and trying to make yourself like feel better, you're just massaging it and you're spreading everything back out and they're, they're swollen because they're trying to do their job. So what you want to do instead is apply like a warm compress or like put light pressure on it, but you don't want to go in like and massage them because you're just going to spread it back out. Oh, okay. Yeah, actually she was just, she'd have me take a deep breath and then she was just like slowly pushing and then she'd sit there for a second and then she'd let out. Is that appropriate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. I just okay. want to make sure like she wasn't like massaging it out. Like I know people oh, yeah, do no. that. <laughs> you don't want to just massage it because you're just spreading it back out okay perfect thank you for clarifying that though that helps thanks yeah no problem thanks Vanessa thank you Carrie thank you Melissa and Melissa remember that um since it is that acidosis and lymphatic congestion the pathway out is your kidneys so really keep testing and checking to see if those kidneys are filtering and you can even increase the amount of tart cherry juice that you're taking to help that kidney filtration to get that acidosis out of the body so that like carrie said it's not coming up so thank you everyone thank you Okay, I can do one more question today. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Hello. Since we're talking about kidneys and filtering, how do you know if your filter, or excuse me, how can you tell, or how do you know if your kidneys are filtering or not? Great. So we do have a resource in the regenerative health app, um, but I'll walk you through it. Basically, you just take a jar. I like to have a clear jar on the back of my toilet. And so then I can just check multiple times a day and you just pee into the jar. You put it on the back of your toilet. You let it settle for a couple of hours and then you come back and look and, and you shake it a little bit. Is it like a snow globe? You want it to be like a snow globe. You want there to be lymphatic congestion in your urine. And so if it's clear, the kidneys are not filtering. And if there's no sediment, the kidneys are not filtering. And, you know, I had been doing raw foods for, I think, seven years and mine still were not filtering. And so it wasn't until I did the fruits the high fruits and the herbs that I got my kidneys filtering and it still took me a few months. So your tart cherry juice is going to be amazing for this. And then again, if you need like an additional tea, you can find that at the health food store, um, nettles, any of those things are great for the kidneys. So most of us, you know, our kidneys are naturally supposed to be filtering and they are to some capacity, but they're not filtering to the capacity that allows for regeneration. And regeneration happens when we get that lymphatic congestion that's built up throughout the entire body, out of the body. And again, that shows up as acidosis, as inflammation, which is what breaks down the cells. And so once we get that, those kidneys filtering, we get that waste out that's how the cells regenerate and repair and rebuild. 
So it is a bit of a process, but also working with your adrenals. So those adaptogenic herbs, like your camp, your be energetic herbs from Perium are amazing for adrenal health. Um, your white American ginseng, you know, extra rest, extra sleep, all of your fresh fruits. So it is just like a kind of a patience thing until we are just consistent, consistent, consistent. And then boom, finally those kidneys open up and that that's really when you either a go into a healing crisis, which can be a little bit uncomfortable where we have all these symptoms come to the surface and then B move out of that into the other side where you, where you're having freedom from these long-term standing suppressed symptoms. Sometimes we didn't even know they were there. So getting the, getting those kidneys open is so beautiful. Um, you can even put a little bit of a castor oil pack on the kidneys to help with that filtration. Um, that's another helpful tip. And if somebody's really struggling with kidney filtration, then after doing, um, you know, a while, a couple of months adding in those fresh fruits, then you can move into like a half day dry fast where you're literally pausing on fluids and pausing on foods. And then boom, that oftentimes opens up those kidneys and gets them filtering. But again, you wanna work up to that gradually. Okay, great, thank you. Because I, what day am I on? This is my first going through the 30 day. I think I'm on like fifth, day 15 or 16. And I just, it's just been so easy for me. So I'm like, I mean, I know that things are working and I know um, I'm having really great, just good, healthy elimination. So I know things are, are moving through, but I haven't had any of the like detox. So I don't know if that's a good thing or not a good thing, or maybe when I hit it again, then I'll might go deeper. So I just wanted to make sure that things are open my pathways and things like that. Yeah, that's great. That's a great question. It looks so different for all of us. And you will at some point go into deeper detox as you, it's basically layers of an onion that we're all peeling. And um, so as you go deeper and as you add in more of those fresh fruits, those are going to take you into that deeper level of cleansing. And so it's great that you're not experiencing any symptoms right now. It's not anything to be worried about, but just know if they do show up, you know, welcome it. <laughs> it's part of the process and definitely check and find in our resources and our cleansing resources, look up kidney filtration. And we have a whole article and how to test and more information like scientific information on it. So um, yeah, that would be my number one goal if I were you. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Great. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. And Carrie Drinkwine does host this on Sundays as well. So every Wednesday and Sunday. So I hope everyone got to listen in and learn. And if you have further questions that we didn't get to, um, feel free to put them in the group um, and we can get to them. So thank you all. We've got to jump off, but I appreciate everyone being here and hearing everyone's stories. Thank you, bye.